Hey YouTube, my name is Hannah Barrett and this class today is a feel good flow. I hope when you walk off the mat, you feel delicious in your body and ready to face whatever the day has in store for you. This class is the first class in a 31 day challenge over on my app, Yoga Happy, called the Yoga Habit. It's brand new for this year, brand new for 2023. And it's classes all under 30 minutes, some even under 15 minutes to help you make that yoga habit more realistic, more easier to fit into your day. You have a combination of classes from vinyasa to power to mandala to restorative to yoga nidra. There's a whole host of things to keep your body guessing, but also to just make sure you're nourishing both your body and mind. Go and check it out. It's free on the app until the end of this month. The challenge stays on the app forever though, and I hope you love it as much as I do. So we're gonna start seated. If you want to come up onto a bolster or a block, absolutely be my guest. You can cross your legs, you can come into kneeling. You do you. Close your eyes. And we're gonna start with five grounding breaths. But before we do, just feel your sit bones and in maybe into the mat or into the block. And imagine there's a piece of string attached to the crown of your head and it's pulling upwards towards the ceiling. And as you visualize that, feel the spine getting longer. Bring your hands onto your knees, turn your palms to face up. And if they're not already, gently close your eyes. Take a big breath in and whisper that breath out through your mouth. As you breathe in, feel the belly, the ribs, the chest expand 360 around the body. And as you whistle that breath out through your lips, or whisper that breath out through your lips, let go. Let go of what do you do not be, need to be holding on to at this point in time. Breathing in, creating space. Breathing out and letting go. Last two breaths, check in. Check in with how your body is feeling. Check in with how your mind is feeling. No judgment, no analysis. Just pay attention. And then last breath, inhale. Exhale, slowly, softly release. Now bring the breath in and out through the nose. And as you do, bring your hands in front of your heart, your palms facing each other. You're gonna start to rub the hands together, create some heat between the palms. Big breath in. Exhale, bring that heat onto your heart and set an intention of play with me. So what that means is, what little wiggles can you do on the mat today to make this more joyful for your body? To make this more playful? Slowly blink the eyes open. And then we're gonna do some kind of cat cows here. So lots of different ways you can do it. You can bring your hands to your knees. You inhale, reach the heart up. Exhale, round it back. You can bring your hands into cactus, making shapes, bringing the elbows together. If you need a little bit more, you can bring your hands into lace them behind the head. Exhale. And wherever your arms are, as you inhale, lift the heart towards the sky, sweep the shoulder blades together. As you exhale, round through the back, pull the shoulder blades apart, tuck the chin. Two more times, inhale. Exhale, round. Last time, inhale. And exhale, round. Inhale, brings you all the way up. Right hand comes down, left arm goes over. Exhale. Inhale, brings you up. Left hand comes down to the mat a little bit back. Right arm goes up towards the sky, you twist. Lift your shoulder a little bit further up, shrugging it up towards your ear, and rotate from your sternum or rotate from your heart space. Inhale, grow the fingers a little bit taller. Exhale. 
And then gently bring that right hand onto your knee, perhaps give yourself a little bit more of a twist using your hand to help you, but not cranking yourself too much into the twist. Now reach your left arm back in space, inhale. Exhale, draw a great big arc over your head, reach, 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 until finally your hand meets your knee. You take a little sway from side to side. Now bring your hands, bring yourself gently up and bring your hands onto your shoulders. We're gonna um, release any stickiness from the thoracic spine, from the upper back. So what I want you to do is draw figures of eights with your elbows, but use your upper back to make that movement. So you're not moving your elbows, your back is moving your arms, if that makes sense. I don't feel like me. <laughs> I've got a bit of a clicking going on. I wonder if it's going into the microphone. Okay, change direction if you can. Four, five, four, three, three, two, and one. Bring yourself back, inhale, reach the arms all the way over, interlace the fingers, reach up even taller. And then exhale, gently release the arms down, left arm comes down, right arm comes over, exhale. Inhale brings you up, left arm reaches high, right arm comes behind you as you find that twist. Lift even further through the fingertips, find space as you inhale. Exhale, find a little bit more rotation. Exhale. Last time, big breath in. Exhale, hand comes down, arm reaches back, reach, 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 breathe in. Breathe out as you draw that great big arc over your body. Reach through the fingertips. Three, two, and one. Hand comes down, head comes down, and sway. Going back to those figures of eights or infinity signs, bring your hands onto your shoulders, and the movement, as before, is coming from the upper back rather than you moving your arms. This was my go-to during pregnancy. Okay, you're gonna switch direction. I don't know why I'm finding that hard today. Five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, reach the arms, great big rainbow over the body. And exhale, this time palms come together, bring it in front of your heart. Remember that intention of play. Now if your legs are crossed, take the cross the other way, the awkward way. And you're gonna inhale, lift, through the crown of the head, just about it before, that imaginary piece of string, and exhale, you're gonna fold forward. Perhaps you're here, and that's okay. Perhaps you're even there, because you've got super tight hips, that's okay as well. If you can come down lower, maybe you bring cushions or blocks to help you release your arms to the floor. Maybe you even bring your hands into a little shark swim, and bring that shark swim behind your head. Wherever you are, stay with your breath, Find length through your spine. See if you can grow your heart forward. You can let the head go. Think equal inhales, equal exhales. Breathing in and out through the nose. And then next inhale, you're slowly gonna walk your fingers up. You're gonna roll over your knees, remove any props maybe you had on the mat you're going to find a downward facing dog. So tuck the toes, lift the hips to the sky, and then take any wiggles that your body might need. Like maybe you need to pedal with the feet. It can feel really nice to bend the knees, take the hips to one side, really stretch into that opposite side, and then take it over the other way. Maybe do a few of those. And then let's all find a little bit of stillness. And let's talk about down dog for a moment. So spread your fingers, push them really strongly into the earth and dial the hands in opposite directions like you're screwing Janjar legs in opposite directions. Broaden through the back and notice how that screwing of the hands helps you broaden and strengthen through the back. If you're collapsing in the shoulders, can you draw the ribs in and have that kind of dialing out of the hands? Really feel it working. Lift your sit bones up towards the sky like there are pieces of string on them. And then don't worry about having your heels touching the floor. That's okay to have them lifted. You will maybe notice that mine are always lifted. 
Lift your kneecaps on the backs of the thighs towards the back of the room and bend your knees as much as you need. Try and think of that nice long spine. Now from here, inhale, lift your right leg to the sky, bend the knee and open the hip, trying to keep the shoulders square. As you exhale, you're gonna step your right foot forward. Use your hand to help you if you need to, towards the front of the mat. Back knee comes down. Inhale, lift up, low lunge. If you want to bring a cushion under the back knee, you absolutely can. If you want to stay here, you can stay here. If you want a little bit more movement, bring your hands down and go back where we came from. So open that hip, push into the hands, think strength in this three-legged dog. Next, exhale, step your foot forward. See if you can do so with making no sound. Arms float up towards the sky. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, hips open. Exhale, last time, low lunge. This time, dangle the arms alongside the body. Have a feeling of pulling your right foot back, pulling your left knee forward and lifting out through the crown of the head. Three, two, one. Perhaps you wanna make the low lunge a little bit longer. If you wanna keep it shorter, that's okay as well. You're gonna bring your left hand down. You can come onto your forearm if you really want to. You're gonna bend your back knee and you're gonna roll the right shoulder open and reach back with the right hand. Maybe you can grab the foot, maybe you can't. If you can't, imagine you're grabbing it, that's enough. If you can grab hold of it, then roll the shoulder open again, lift, so you can feel length from your tailbone all the way through the crown of the head. And then play around with sensations. Pull the foot in and notice how that feels. Push the foot into the hand as you open through the heart and see how that feels. What does your body need today? And as I said, perhaps you want to come down onto your forearms. Perhaps you come down onto a block. That's okay as well. Hold for three. For two, long spine, slowly release the foot, tuck the toes. If you're on your forearm, come up onto your hand, come, uh, lift that back knee off the mat and peel your right fingers up towards the sky, coming into a twist. Hug your inner thighs in towards each other and breathe. In a moment, we're gonna come into side plank. So the option is to drop the knee and swing that right leg over. If balance is a problem, you can kick stand this bottom leg. If you're feeling really strong today and your balance is with you, you can perhaps come into a full side plank. Suction the shoulder blade onto the back ribs. Feel super strong and secure. We're gonna hold here for five, four, three, two, and one. Step your right foot behind, bend your left knee, bring your right hand down. If you're on the off the mat, that's okay. Wiggle your hands so they're facing the same way, which doesn't make any sense because mine aren't facing the right the same way. So either they're gonna face down towards your toes, maybe that feels good. Maybe they're gonna face outwards, maybe that feels good. Or maybe you want to bring them back in space, maybe that feels good for you. So for me, I'm gonna pick into like little butterfly wings so they're facing opposite. And then again, you can let your head go if you want to, or you can bring your neck flexors into, in, into this. So a little tucking of the chin and a little feeling like you're pushing your head back in space, like you're giving yourself a double chin. Now notice what your glutes doing. Can you give them a squeeze to lift your hips? Hold three, two, gently drop down. Perhaps wiggle your hips so they're on the mat. Bring your hands behind your thighs, roll your shoulders back, and just start to tip your body back. That imaginary piece of string is attached to your head. Maybe your toes start to hover, maybe your shins come parallel, maybe you let go, coming into your boat pose. Now from here, perhaps you need stillness, perhaps you need a little bit of play. Bend one elbow, reach the other long, long, and then switch it out a little bit. Maybe like you're rowing your boat. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that until this moment of actually doing it. Okay, one, two. Remember your toes can drop down if you need them to. Keep control in your core. This is the last one. And then bend the knees in. Give yourself a squeeze. Take a big breath in. And a big sigh out. You're gonna roll over your knees. 
you're going to step back. We're going to take our first chaturanga, maybe drop the knees. Glutes are on as you lower, shoulders stay lifted as you come all the way down onto your belly. You're going to bring your left forearm onto the floor and you're going to bring it about um, an angle, diagonally across your mat, to just give you a little bit more stability. You're going to bend your left knee and you're going to reach back with your right hand and just pull that leg in towards you, rolling that right shoulder open as you do so. So you can have a little bit of resistance here, so as the hand pulls in, the foot pushes back and resists. Keep the pubic bone pushing down, keep lengthening through the crown of the head. If there's any stickiness in the lower back, you can totally come down to lie on your belly. Hold for another three, two, and one. And just so we're equal, we're gonna do the other side straight away. Right arm comes across, right knee bends, left arm reaches round, roll the shoulder open, and have that little play. Pushing one hand into the foot, foot into the hand, as you reach through the crown of the head. And breathe. Three, two, and one. Release, perhaps push back up through plank, and take yourself to down dog, or maybe you go through child's pose. You do you. We're gonna go straight to the other side. Left leg lifts, left hip opens. Reach the knee up towards the ceiling as you square the shoulders to the mat. Exhale, use your hand if you need to. Step the foot to the front of the mat. Inhale, lift you up. Low lunge. Either you stay there like before, think nice, strong low lunge, or exhale brings you back. Breathe in, breathe out, step forward. Can you step forward, making no sound? Lift, lift, lift. Last time, exhale. In, open. Exhale, step the foot forward. Reach the arms, actually dangle the arms alongside you. Have that sensation of pulling the front knee back, the, front, the back knee forward, the front foot back as you roll. Lift through the crown of the head and feel that glute. Feel that glute activated, helping to open through the front of the hip. Now from here, perhaps you scoot your foot a little bit further forward. You're gonna bend your back knee, you're gonna roll that left shoulder open as you come back to this twisted lizard pose. Maybe you stay here, maybe you come onto your forearm. And just like before, perhaps you play with pulling the foot in and then resisting pulling out. What does your body feel like it needs today? Hold and breathe. Another three. Right glute active. Try not to sink here. Feel some strength, feel some support. Two and one. Gently release the foot. Come onto your hand if you haven't already. Lift that back knee. Peel your left fingertips towards the sky. Hug your inner thighs in and breathe. Heel to crown of head. We're going towards that side plank. Remember, option to drop the bottom knee or step both feet on top of each other, drawing a long line all the way from heels through to crown of head. Now, just like we did before in a moment, we're gonna step into that reverse table. Before we do, lift the hips away from the ground, stack them on top of each other, and then gently left foot steps over, left hand comes down. We're back to that reverse table. If you want to, you can straighten the arms and take a reverse plank instead, perhaps having the fingertips facing towards the toes. Legs nice and straight, glutes on. Let the head go if you wish, or maybe get those deep neck flexors to work. Wherever you are, it's five, four, three, two, Oh, and one. Come down into your mat, we're coming back to boat pose. Roll the shoulders back, lift the legs, reach the arms forward. And then again, we're gonna row our boat from side to side. Another two, another one. And amazing. Roll over. This time, bring the toes together. Take the knees apart. Melt your body through your legs and find yourself in child's pose. 
maybe letting the forehead rest against the mat, maybe bringing the hands into that little shock spin, just like before. Take a couple of moments to come back to the breath to settle yourself. And then when you're ready, we're gonna do our final sequence. So find yourself back in downward facing dog. This is a little balance challenge now, everyone. If you fall, as I said, please don't worry. Simply pick yourself back up. You have got this. Inhale, lift your right leg high to the sky. Exhale, right foot steps forward, perhaps not as far as you usually would. You're lifting straight into warrior three. Think about how you're gonna get there. So stabilize through this right hip, perhaps reach your arms out to the side, maybe onto your hips. Maybe you wanna reach them forward. I don't attack my plants. <laughs> Notice how the left hip wants to open. Can you spiral it down towards the floor? Reach the fingers away from you. Have a bend in this right knee if you need to. If your body is further up, that's okay as well. Think long line, toes through to crown of head. And here. Four, three, four, two. We're coming to cheat tree pose for Kasana. Come all the way up to stand. I'll turn to face you. Your left foot can go on the floor. <laughs> I totally was losing my balance then. On the floor as a little tripod. You can bring it up here. You can bring it all the way up. See if you can bring it wherever it needs to go without using your hands. Your hands, bring them into heart center and be mindful. What our body loves to do here is to cheat and we end up hinging into this hip. So what I want you to do is push through that right foot, feel the muscles in your hip activate, help to stabilize you. Then perhaps you lift through your arms and perhaps you take some wiggles, perhaps you close your eyes. <sighs> okay, holding here, three, two, and one. Bring that knee back in towards you, flex the foot, figure for the legs, and you're gonna sit down into a figure four chair pose. So arms reach up, shrug the shoulders up towards the eel, ears, and then imagine you're kind of spiraling your armpits towards each other. Hold, three, maybe perhaps sit a little bit lower, two, and one from here. Don't move a moment. What I want you to do, we're coming into half moon. So you're gonna kick this leg up, you're gonna open this leg to the side, and as you do, your right hand's gonna come down, and we're opening the body up into half moon. We're nearly off this right foot, I promise. If you're feeling it in your hip, even in your, all through your leg, you're not alone. Lift that back heel up towards the sky, grab a block or anything for underneath this right hand if you need to. And then slowly, we're coming into warrior two. Think big step back and see if you can do so without adjusting your feet. Now imagine you're ripping the mat apart with your feet. Notice what that feels like in your legs and your hips. And then bring your hands to your, um, to your hips and take some little wiggles, little cat-cow kind of movements with the pelvis, little circles, and just feel into the pose. I know this isn't the classic variation, but it can feel really good. And then bring yourself back to center. Take a big breath in. Exhale, we're taking this back into Skandasana. Bend your left knee, turn the toes a little bit out, come onto your right heel and sit low. All the way down, we're gonna take it to the floor. Can you do so for five, four, three, two, and one. I totally gave up during that. We're gonna face the back of the mat again now, and we're gonna be on our left leg. So take it in towards kind of a pigeon um, shape. So the leg, it can be 90, it can be 45 like mine. Um, and what I want you to do is to lift yourself up if you can, or just come up onto your fingertips if you can't do that. Imagine you are ripping the mat apart with your legs again. So you're trying to pull them away from each other and push down into the earth. Hold for three, hold for two, and a one. And we're not gonna chill in our pigeon just yet, or that kind of pigeon anyway. You're gonna come down onto your left hip, you're gonna step your right leg over the top, and you're gonna take a twist, and you're gonna be like, ah, oh, yes, 
My hip needs this. Just gazing over that right shoulder. And instead of classic pigeon, we're gonna come into double pigeon or fire log pose. Big warning. <laughs> I can't do this pose. My body just doesn't like this pose. So I'm going to show you a variation you can do. So take a little counter twist to the other side. And then your right leg is either going to stack on top of your left. So flex that foot and you're going to stack the legs on top of each other. Can you see? I can't do this. I, can't, I don't, my body's just like, no, not playing game, it doesn't work. So for me, what feels better is bringing that right leg in front, parallel still with the edge of the mat, bringing my hands alongside me, and then using my strength to push my knees down to the floor. And as I do, and you can do this if you're in Frylog as well, just taking a little um, fold forward over my legs. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, close your eyes and soften, soften your breath. Relax your jaw, soften your eyes, your cheeks. Exhale. Grow a little bit taller through your um, spine. And then as you exhale, let go that little bit more. Now slowly, softly, come all the way up. Get the legs a little wiggle from side to side. And we're gonna find our downward facing dog. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna turn around so I can see you. So, inhale, lift your left leg high to the sky. We're coming back to that warrior three. So step your foot forward, perhaps not as far as you usually would. Find your balance. <laughs> Find your balance as you come all the way up. Don't shake your head as you do so, because you're going to fall over. Okay, where are your arms? Where do they want to be? Do they want to be big aeroplane wings? Do you want more stability by bringing them to your hips? Can you push that left foot firmly into the floor? Push your big toe mound into the floor? My balance is, is non-existent today, guys. So bring your right knee in towards your chest. We're coming back to tree pose. See if you can bring your foot there without using your hands. Remember what I said about pushing through that grounded foot, turning on the muscles of your hips. Maybe you lift your hands towards the sky. Maybe you close your eyes. Wherever you are, grow tall through the crown of your head. Feel rooted in your tree by that bottom foot. And then bring that right knee in towards you. Flex the foot, figure for the legs. Sit back into your chair pose. Can you keep that nice long spine? Can you stay with your breath? If you're struggling with balance, find a focus point on the floor to gaze at. Listen to your breath. From here, in a moment, we are going towards half moon, Adha Chandrasana. Are you ready? Right knee comes in towards you. Open that hip out to the side, so much so. Your left hand comes down, your leg extends behind you. You find that half moon, grab a block if you need to for underneath the hand. Flex the back foot, lift it to the sky. Feel that glute activate. Spiral your right shoulder open. Now stepping into warrior two in a moment, can you take a long step so you don't need to adjust your feet? So start to bend into your left foot, Step back, arm go long. Imagine you are ripping the mat apart with your feet. Think of each foot having four corners, push them down into the ground and rip them apart. Then hands come onto your hips and you're gonna take those little circles, perhaps their little pelvic tilts. What does your body need? What feels good? And when you're ready for stillness, come back and we find Skandasana. And then we're gonna be on the floor, okay? So bend into your right knee, turn your right toes out, come onto your left heel, sit low, get this glute to work. Nice long spine, coming down five, four, three, two, and one. From here, you're gonna step, oh no, from here, we're gonna do our pigeon. I was like, oh, I've forgotten what we're doing. So you're gonna turn yourself over that right leg, Make it into a pigeon shape, but lift it up. So super active pigeon, lift through the crown of your head, rip the mat apart, push into the mat, feel those leg muscles activate, 
Feel the opening through this front hip. Another three, another two, and one. This time, come onto that right hip. Step the left leg over, give the leg a hug. Gaze over your left shoulder. Breathe into this left hip. Releasing as much as you can through the hips. And then exhale, take a little counter twist. And we're gonna take that fire log or double pigeon on this side. So left leg either stacks on top. Can't really show you. <laughs> and then all you bring the left foot in front, just like me. Fingertips to the side, inhale. And then exhale, perhaps it feels good to take yourself forward over the legs. Softening all through the body, softening the face in particular, the jaw, helping you open through the hips. Press your knees down towards the earth so you feel a little activation as well. Notice how that changes sensation. And then inhale brings you all the way up. Release the legs. Give them a little windmill from side to side. And we're gonna take this straight into Shavasana. So you're gonna bring your legs mat distance apart, let the feet hang heavy, and then you're gonna fold your body down piece by piece, vertebrae by vertebrae, until you come down onto your back. Your hands come alongside the body, your fingers curl in naturally. Together we breathe in, together we breathe out. And with that breath out, let go. Now, no longer changing the breath, you are simply its witness. Different parts of your body move as you breathe. Each breath looks different. So ending this class with a powerful reminder to start this new year. A poem by one of my favorites, Erin Hansen, and it goes. If there's one thing I may tell you, let it be, you are your home. Your body is the only house that you will ever truly own. Maybe it's got some broken windows and there are tear stains on the floors. Maybe you lock the things you wish you weren't behind its many doors. But there is wisdom on its bookshelves and a laugh to light the rooms. There's a vase upon the table where the love you grown all blooms. Dreams sit on the mantelpiece next to kindness and your trust where you use them all so often, they have no time to collect dust. So please don't look at mansions with that envy in your eyes. There's more that makes a home than its appearance or its size. Your body is your shelter, so you deserve to love it all. Don't let the world stand round outside and tell you how to paint your walls. How lucky that you have somewhere to protect you from the night. And if there are cracks left from the past, well then, they just let in more light. So when you're ready, you're going to slowly wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Inhale, reach your arms overhead, reach your toes away from you. Exhale, hug your knees in, give them a great big squeeze.
You're going to gently roll to your right side and you're going to pause. You're going to take a breath. And then you're gently going to bring yourself up to a seated position. Bring your hands flat on your heart and close your eyes. Take a moment to notice how that flow made you feel. I hope it made you feel strong and connected. I hope it made you smile. And let's simply end this class with a breath together. Breathe in. Breathe out, let it go. Thank you so much for joining me on the mat here today. I can't wait to see you again tomorrow.